Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to this workers' retreat. You are not going to pet us or pat us at the back. You are not going to excuse our sins and shortcomings. You are not going to excuse all the things that we have done that has taken holiness away from our mouth, holiness from our heart, holiness from our messages. You are not going to overlook all our foolishness that has taken away real conviction from our lives and our hearts. Oh Lord, we thank you. Because you are a good God. You know that the time is coming very, very soon. When many people that are called preachers or leaders or Christians will not know their left from their right. When they will not know the difference between real prophets of God and false prophets. When they will not know the difference between the move and the method of the Antichrist. And they will not know the difference between that and the things that the Spirit of God is really doing. O oh Lord, in the world in which we live. People say that good is evil, that evil is good. And a lot of these writers, they are completely silent on restitution. They are completely silent on what it means to be properly married. They are com completely silent on Christian perfection, on holiness. And they blur the edge of the sword of the word of God. And Lord, Many of us here, we have been involved in reading all those materials. Until we ourselves have become dull of hearing. Until we do not know, any time now, the tears of conviction. Until we do not know the challenge of the word of God that will drive us on our knees. Until our lives are not as they ought to be. And yet, we do not allow the spirit of God to make all these things to be dug away from our hearts. Lord, we've gone very far. From the state overseers, to the district pastors, to the ordinary pastors, and to the workers, and to the members of the church. We do not know where we stand. And some of us will defend all these evil things that we have been reading. We spend God's money on evil. God's money on erroneous doctrine, on cheap, useless books, and useless cases. Oh Lord, the way we have spent your money, the way we have gone astray, the way we have spent our time, the things we have read, and it has weakened the church. It has taken back bone away from the church. That the church is no more standing on where the church of Jesus stood originally. Oh Lord, I pray you will forgive in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I pray that this day will be a day of self-examination. A day when each one will be able to go back to the Lord and be able to detect where he has fallen, where he has gone astray. Lord, I am asking that your word will find a place in every heart in Jesus' name. Keep on teaching us. Lord, we pray that the people that are obedient, a real change will so take place in their lives that they will become a firebrand and they will be able to do something serious for the glory of God in Jesus' name. We know you cannot use the rebellious we know you cannot use the disobedient. We know you cannot use people that are adamant in their ways. We know you will not use the people that want to go on just feeding on materials that will not pour them up onto revival, renewal, reformation, restoration. And therefore, Lord, for such people, we pray that you show them the real condition of their hearts and lives. That anybody here that will defend erroneous doctrine, defend erroneous preachers, defend people that have gone astray. You will show them, O oh Lord, that they themselves have gone astray so that they will be able to retrace their steps and they will be able to come back in Jesus' name. 
for our preachers, our workers, who have not been reading the Bible, who cannot even have quiet time, not personally and not in a family, who just gallop and go from place to place, only preaching and teaching and what they call ministration, and the real inner life of the Spirit, the inner life of sobriety, the inner life of holiness is missing. How I pray, you will show them the way back home. So that, Lord, we will go back to the original thing in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, Lord, if the foundations be destroyed, what will the righteous do? And if the people in the leadership, the state overseers in particular, if they do not have any foundation left, if they do not have any concern for holiness left, if they do not have any concern to be straightforward and to go deep in the word of God, then the church in their state is lost. But Lord, I pray that you'll wake every one of those state overseers up in Jesus' name. That as the workers are hearing the word of God, as the pastors are hearing the word of God, as all the others are hearing the word of God, so will they hear the word of God and there will be a definite change in their life patterns also in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you keep this church from the error of this century, from the error of this generation. I've talked about Wesley and the Methodist Church Lord, we we'll see what they are today. They declined little by little. They went astray little by little. They became cold little by little. They forgot the real center of the word of God little by little. Those old writings are still there, but the Methodists are not reading them. All those materials on Christian perfection, holiness, and sanctification, they're still there, but the Methodists are not reading them. And Lord, the way this deeper life is going, we are following the same step, the same downward road, the same way of destruction, the same way of forgetting the real truths of the word of God. And we are forgetting that people have gone before us. They have been destroyed. They have been forgotten. And Lord, we do not want a large church that will not keep to the sound teaching of the word of God. We do not want educated, enlightened preaching that will not convict people of their sins. We do not want to be like the other people, like the other denominations, like the other churches. We want to come back to our spiritual root. And anything that has made us to go astray, anything that has make, made us to be falling, anything that, anything that has taken the real fire and the real conviction and the real purity, and the real holiness away from us. Take it away in Jesus' name. <laughs> Lord, even if we become a smaller church, that the people that are not willing to take the total word of God, if they want to go, if they do not, do not want to stay, we will know that the people that are remaining were preparing for heaven. Already, Lord, some few people have left, but the stories we hear about them, they drop sanctification the moment they leave. They drop real consistent Christian living the moment they leave. All the things they are following after are just the things that are passing away. Healing the sick, speaking in tongues, falling on the ground, rolling on the ground, seeing vision, seeing revelation, talking about things, looking for money, and all the things of this world, how we are sorrowful for them that they could have drunk at the well of living waters, and yet, living just one week, just one month, just one year, they become another person. Lord, we pray for those who are still remaining, that we will stand on this word of God in Jesus' name. That, Lord, any tendency within us to just look at this, to look at this, to look at that, and be inquisitive, Wanting to know what are the Philistines doing. Wanting to know what are the Canaanites doing. Wanting to know what are the Jebusites doing. Wanting to know what are the Pentecostals doing. Wanting to know what are the Orthodox doing. Wanting to know what are the heathens doing. What are the Pharisees doing. 
all that attitude of being inquisitive. Take it away from us in Jesus' name. Make us real children of God. Help us to keep standing on the word of God. Lord, in the next message we have now, I pray that you speak to every heart. And Lord, you change us. You transform us. You lead us in the right way. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's look at John chapter 3, verse 6. I'm talking on the flesh and the spirit. John chapter 3, verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Here the Lord Jesus Christ confronted Nicodemus with a truth. A deep type of truth that he knew nothing about. He had come to the Lord. Asking the Lord or wanting to know what he ought to do. Although he praised the Lord and he appreciated the ministry of Jesus Christ. But the Lord told him that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then Nicodemus wondered, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Then Jesus talked about being born of water and being born of the spirit. Then Jesus mentioned something. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Here Jesus said there are two groups of people, only two, not three, just two, all over the world. Some are in the camp of those who are born in the flesh of the flesh and they remain flesh. The other camp, they are born of the spirit and their spirit. Nicodemus had been educated, but Jesus was telling him, if you educate flesh to the greatest level, that he can get the highest certificate that a man can get, he is still flesh. Flesh, though educated. Nicodemus had been very religious, but Jesus told him that flesh cannot be changed by religion. That a man may be very religious, the flesh is still flesh. A man might move in high social circle, and that the moving around in the social circle does not change the man. Flesh is still flesh. A man might get married, become refined and cultured, but flesh will still be flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Jesus said there is a gulf. There is a division. There is a wall of partition between the flesh and the spirit. And you cannot move yourself out of the fleshly realm to the spiritual realm. Neither can you just drag yourself out of the spiritual realm to the fleshly realm until something has taken place. So then, he wanted Nicodemus to know that if he had been born of the flesh, but he had not been born again, he was still of the flesh. We need to remember that today. Sometimes people come to our church here, and I ask them, I say, are you born again? Well, they say a lot of things, changes have taken place in my life. I say, you can still be flesh. They say, they have learned a lot of doctrines in the church. I say, you can still be flesh. They say, I've even tried to do some restitution. I say, you can still be flesh. Or they say, I've tried to make a change of life, to change myself. I say, you can still be flesh. Because before you can be transferred from being flesh to the spirit, a transformation will take place before the transfer. If that transformation has not taken place and you have not prayed to be really born again, 
whatever changes are taking place, you may know doctrine. You may know people. You might even be a worker in the church. You might not have been born again. To be born again means you will recognize sin as sin. Everything that the Lord calls sin. And you will repent of them. You will turn away from them. When you repent and you turn away from them, you will lay everything on the altar and say, Lord, forgive me, change me, I need a change. You will confess your need and necessity of a change. And the Lord will forgive you. Then there will be the witness of the Spirit of God. In many churches I go, I mean deeper life churches, if after the preaching you tell the people, if you want the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart or into your life, raise up your hand, you see them raising up their hands. More than half of the congregation, they don't know what it means to be born again. They go to house fellowship, they go to Bible study, they go to revival hour, they attend Sunday fellowship, they do not know what it means to be of the Spirit. But every time you tell them, raise up your hands now if you want to have the Lord in your life, you want to be free from sin, they'll still raise up their hands. Who tells us? The majority of the people we have in our deeper life churches, they are unbelievers. They are sinners. They have not been born again. That's why they raise up their hands every time. They do not know a definite change coming upon their lives. But Jesus said, you will become spirit when you are born of the spirit. What does that mean? It means that when you were still of the flesh, everything you did was of the flesh. Your marriage of the flesh, according to the community custom. Your dressing of the flesh, according to the custom of the society. Your language of the flesh, according to the culture of your people. Every, every plan you had, it was of the flesh, according to what mommy wants, what daddy wants, what my neighbors want, what my neighbors are doing. The moment you become born again, you have the spirit. Everything you do will be of the spirit, will be sanctioned, supported, approved by the spirit of God. But if that has not taken place, it means that you are still of the flesh. In Galatians chapter 5. Verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. What this is saying is that there is a battle, a warfare, between the flesh and the spirit. In the person that is not born again, the flesh will overcome his human spirit. In the one that is born again, the power of the Holy Spirit will overcome all the temptations and all the attractions of the flesh. And so it means the unregenerate man, he lives in the flesh. He cannot please the Lord. He is under sin. He is dominated by the flesh and is enslaved by sin. In his flesh dwells sin. There is no good sin in that flesh. In Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. It says in verse 6, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 8, so then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now we need to learn something here. Many times in our churches, we teach people doctrine. We teach people about marriage. We teach people about dressing. We teach people about a lot of things. And then eventually, they are not able to do them. And we wonder why. We get discouraged. We become unhappy. We say we are laboring over these people. And the simple word of God that we teach them, they cannot obey them. Well, it is only indicating to us that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. They will not be able to obey which means then, what we should do for them 
is to talk to them how they can be born of the Spirit. The same thing as when the workers retreat here. I will tell you, I told you last night that I will tell you some things that may look hard to the ordinary man. And this will test you. Because if you are of the flesh, you cannot please God. You will say, I don't like that. I don't accept that. I won't do that. Now when you say that, will I be disappointed? Not at all. I am not disappointed because it just shows to me, I thought that person was in the spirit and I gave something that only a man, a woman in the spirit can accept. He cannot accept it. Oh, now he's not of the spirit. That only tells us a story about you. I told you I was going to still talk about the television that people are carrying on the back, carrying on the head. And there are some people in our church here, they say, well, I'm in deeper life, I'm in deeper life. And that television, whether this church likes it or not, we're going to defend it. We're going to fight it out. We'll not fight anything out with you. Once we tell you that television is of the devil, all the programs are of the devil, and you say no, it only shows us you are of the flesh. You can't do it. Because except you are born again, except you give your life to the Lord, you cannot be obedient to the Lord. We, we tell uh, women, we say be modestly dressed. All the jewelry, all the powder, all the painting, all the perming, get rid of it. And then an house fellowship leader, that may be the leader or the pastor did not know that you were still perming your head before, when the preaching is becoming intense, and we're mentioning it every time, you go and you say, well, about this thing, I cannot take this, it means you are not born again. Oh, you say, I know a lot of people that are born again, and they still use lipsticks, they still use all the finger paints, they still have all the earrings, how do you know they are born again? Have you gone to the book of life to check up their names there? Because they say, praise the Lord. Because they say, hallelujah. Because they say, I belong to Jesus. Because they say, Jesus is Lord. That's born again. That's not born again. That's just language. If you cannot take the word of God, you cannot please God, it's because you are not born again. It says so then, they that are in the flesh, they cannot please God. We teach here unashamedly about Christian marriage. And we say, young man, if you are going to get married, don't listen to what your parents are saying. Go and marry from your uh, local government, from your village. We say, don't listen to that. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If you find that difficult, it's because you are not born again. You see, being born again, the evidence of it is that you are able to listen to the word of God. You are able to obey the word of God. If you are not, you are still of the flesh. And sometimes as people come in here, we tell them that all the meetings with the village people, that a child of God, when you come out of church on Sunday morning, you don't go to village meeting where they drink pine wine, drink alcohol. We say now, if you are of the Lord, stay with the body of Christ. Ah, you say, no, I cannot take that. I've been taking everything they have been saying. That one, I cannot take the, our people who are your people. If those are your people, you can never miss their village meeting, their pine wine drinking meeting. You are not a child of God. A child of God has become totally separate. Come here from among them and be ye totally separate, says the Lord. And if um, any time we're going to have retreat, you say our village people, they want to have another get together. Because of that get together, I cannot attend the Christian meeting. Jesus said he's inviting you for a meeting. You said, well, my village people are inviting me, Jesus. I satisfy them first. After satisfying them, then I might have time for you. You are not a Christian. In your marriage, we tell you, according to the word of God, you make your marriage according to how a child of God will get married. We don't give alcohol. We don't give cola nuts. We don't give all the things of the world that they give in a traditional way. Uh, you say, that one, I've been taking everything. This one, I will not take this. Don't worry. You are not one of us. The people who are children of God, they hear God's word. It is those who are not children of God that are not able to hear 
God's word. So then, they that are in the flesh, they cannot please God. What are the marks of the flesh? How do you see flesh and recognize it so very clearly? Look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Manifest means plainly to be seen. Which are these? Adultery. The word adultery means unfaithfulness. To your husband or to your wife. Now, when I talk about unfaithfulness to your husband or to your wife, there are people that are so ignorant about the standard of the word of God. Let me tell you this. In the early years of deeper life, I don't remember a month will pass by at the Monday Bible study without reminding them, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, has committed adultery without already in his heart. We quoted it every month, every time. Sometimes every week. Sometimes in one single Bible study. We'll quote it five times in that single Bible study. But now, we don't hear about that in many of our churches. You know why? We are not faithful. Because it is not just when you go into the real immoral practice. The way we say it in Lagos is this, that an old man comes for counseling in the office, maybe in the zonal office, or in the district office, or in the state capital office. And the man there that is counseling, if it's an old man, body wrinkled and all that, he counsels two minutes, the person is gone. When an old woman comes that doesn't have hygiene, Pure hygiene will be almost smelling and all the face wrinkled. The person that is counseling will counsel that woman and that is all. Just two minutes, three minutes. Now a young lady comes who is not married. Or who is married but is still fresh in the body, still young. And this fellow that will counsel the old man two minutes, counsel the old woman just two, three minutes, will see now 30 minutes is still counseling that person. Why? Why do we spend 30 minutes on the young lady and two minutes on the old woman and two minutes on the old man? That's adultery. You are looking at something. You are looking for something. Why don't we spend five minutes with the lady and spend 30 minutes with the old man that is nearer the grave? Why don't we spend 30 minutes with the woman, the body is wrinkled, and the legs are walking nearer to the grave? Why don't we spend more time with the people that are going to the grave? Why do we spend all the time with the people that look charming and young and nice and beautiful? That's it. We're not faithful. If a man is faithful, in his heart he will know that there is no evil. You are faithful to your wife. Anything you cannot say while your wife is not there to a lady, you don't say to the lady when your wife is not there. You will not ask any question from the lady that if your wife were there, you will not be asking. Recently, uh, about, I think about two weeks ago now, I wanted to interview a lady because the lady has gone into sin. And I knew that I will be asking details about what did you do, what did you not do. And the lady is not in Lagos here from another state. But I knew about the scene. And I sent to her, come to Lagos, I want to know about this. And uh, when she came, I called my wife there. I said, my wife, sit down, I need to interview this lady. If you are not here, the questions I need to ask, I will not be able to ask. But now that you are here, I said, lady, this is sister so-and-so, that's my wife. Do you know her? She said, yes. I said, I'm going to question you. I'm going to ask you questions that are personal and that detail because of the evil that you have done which i know about now this is my wife that's why i'm asking you the question and then she said that's all right and then i asked her all the questions i wanted to ask the other ones i didn't finish asking my wife asked her i about this i about this and when she answered all those questions i said well you see this is sin this thing that you have done now you go and pray for salvation. Make sure that you give yourself totally to the Lord. Because if you die in this condition now, no hope. 
And then I told my wife, I have finished. Go with her. Where she slept, that's between her and my wife. Where she will go after that, that's between her and my wife. How she will get transportation money to go back where she was going, not me, not me, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm not stone. That's between her and my wife. That's deeper life, original. That's how to do it. But another person's wife, you are inside the place and you lock the door and you say, my wife don't come here now, I am counseling. What are you saying that your wife can't hear? You are committing sin. Adultery. The people that are not living right. It is not when the woman becomes pregnant that you know that you have committed adultery. Once in your heart, once in your body, your body changes. And the feeling in your body is like you are with your wife, you have committed adultery. That's the word of God. And somebody is not well dressed, and instead of looking away from there or closing your eyes... You, you keep on looking at the person, looking at the private uh, parts, and looking at this, and looking at this, and uh, you say, well, why are these people dressing like this? Why did you open your eyes? Didn't God give you eyelids to close your eyes? But you didn't. You were enjoying it. That's how to go to hell, little by little. That's why I told you before, that a person can be speaking in tongues and go to hell. A person can be among the prayer warriors, and say, I'm praying. I tell them in Lagos here, if you, when you listen to the cases, if you buy the cases, you will hear good message. I tell them in Lagos, said, if you go to anybody that says his prayer warrior in Lagos here, and he lays his hand on you, and he begins to touch the air of the woman, and he's fondling with it, that's an adulterer. Run away from them. They're children of hell. Or you say that eh, I, I pray for somebody they had child, I pray for somebody they had this, and begins to touch different parts of your body. Is that prayer? <laughs> you, you pray for somebody, you touch the back, you touch the front, you touch the head. Is that prayer? That is committing sin. And it says the works of the flesh is adultery and fornication. You see, when, when we were starting the deeper life here, the reason we call it deeper life is that all that all the other people were doing at the youth life club and also at the young Christian men association all over here, we saw that they were shallow. You know, the men will be running after the women, uh, beating one another. Eh, I don't like that. Eh, leave me alone in Christian circle. That's why we added deeper to our own to differentiate it from the Young Men Christian Association and to differentiate it from all the youth life club all around. We had a deeper Christian life ministry. And at the beginning, nobody will take a lady's scarf and say, eh, I want to look at this. That's fornication. Nobody will be running after the eh, leave me alone. No. We, we didn't know about and they say kissing one another. Look at you now, even as we're sitting together, those days, ah, some of you are the original Deeper Life members in your stage. They said those days that we didn't have love. Have you heard that before? They said only holiness, holiness, holiness. That's how they made fun of us. Because when we come to church, we'll be looking down like this so as not to see anybody. We will be running. We will not be one minute late for the Bible study. I was talking to a pastor now. Just before this meeting, I said, how is your Sunday worship? He told me. I said, how is your Bible study? Oh, he said, we're about half. Half of the Sunday. Whereas those days, we will be running, running. If you miss choruses alone, you are late. And sometimes some of our preachers, when they were real preachers, they came in there and they said, how many of you are late to the Bible study today? And no matter, you can pack your Volvo outside, you can pack your Peugeot outside. If you are late, you will stand up. And some of our preachers those days, I hope that they will remain like that. They will say, keep on standing. And all those people with all their Peugeot and all their cars, they will keep on standing. They will preach the word of God. But today, if Pujopi, even if they come, if it's last minute to the end of the Bible, you'll be thanking God they even came today. 
we are not there again. A lot of things now, people getting married. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, it was devil. I was tempted. I became pregnant. I won't pray for them. I won't even touch them. They are not deep alive. They are bastards. They are not children. Children here, children of the people that know the word of God. Ah! Somebody wanted to touch you to the point that you, you will become pregnant, you will run out of the house. Those days, anything that happened like that, even if a man like this will touch a lady that is deeper life sister in the bus or in the place of work, they will say, no, I'm a Christian. If work will go, if boss will say, hey, come here, lady, uh, you are, if you are going to get promotion, you must, uh, you must cooperate. Uh, you say, sir, I'm a Christian. If work will go, work will go. And at that time, a salary was not even up to this at that time. And immediately the boss say, hey, you will go. Uh, you, even before they terminate your appointment, you give their paper to them. If we ask you, what happened? Uh, you, you wanted to commit sin with me. The man has not mentioned it. Our sisters, they run away. Today now, they mention it. Eh, well, our church must not hear. Our church must not hear is the answer you will give. A man wanted to rough and you. Our church must not hear. And you go with them to lunch. They give you lunch. And eh, you say, eh, because if I don't go to lunch like that, they will say that my Christianity is too strict. You don't want your Christianity to be too strict. You don't want them to abuse you. You don't want them to persecute you because you are a Christian. There we are. That today now, we are, they, they are called sisters. Not my sisters. They are not mine, but they call them sisters. They will, they will carry pregnancy from unbeliever, member of your deeper life. Not our own, no. Member of your own deeper life will carry pregnancy from unbeliever. And you say, ah, where did you see this one? Eh, it was uh, one night like this. I didn't know it will result. You didn't know. So you've been doing this thing in the dark and you are coming to our Sunday worship. And you are coming to Bible study. Ah, so you are one of the people spoiling church and we are fasting and praying. So you are one of them. We didn't know. There we are. Deeper life. Fornication. Now we have the girlfriend, boyfriend. They, they will be deceiving us. Hey, I have prayed. I, who are you deceiving? Which prayer did you pray? You have a, you know, one friend here. In workers retreat. Hey, sister, ah, where did you come from? That's what they taught you in your state. Give me your address. That's what we taught you in the state. And I will be writing to you. This is not, this is clean friendship. Which one is clean friendship? That's what we taught you. And then you have another deeper life friend here. Another day, then you are writing. Eventually, you come and deceive us. You pray. Ah, when you do the marriage, you will suffer. You, you will smell pepper. Uh, we will, if Jesus started, we shall be here together. Uh, you will say, that man in Lagos, it was hard, but he told us. You will remember, I told you. When you have girl, that's girlfriend once you begin to write letter and hey, sister how is uh, the pastor don't ask about me oh, from uh, your girlfriend they are not they are not our member here if you are writing to anybody how is the work in lagos how is pastor don't ask about pastor pastor here doesn't know boyfriend girlfriend and uh, write to me oh, send cassette to me the cassette will not do good to your life because you are disobeying the word of God. You have girlfriend here. You have girlfriend there. You have one there. Then you say you are praying. After you say you are prayed, then you bring to us. Ah, that after my prayer. And I saw this thing. And uh, in fact, I rejected it at first. You are a liar. You didn't reject anything. This is the person you have been running after. And you have been saying, no matter what happens, I will marry that person. And you have been exchanging letter. And here now, you teach yourself behind. Oh, they will ask you this question. Oh, they, if they ask you this, this is how to answer. If they ask you this, this is how to answer. And you marry. No matter who conducts that marriage for you, you will suffer in that marriage. Because you are not going according to the word of God. Fornication. Immorality. They say they are in courtship. And they want to go and do introduction. They will not allow anybody to go with them. And when they go over there to their parents, they will give them one room to sleep where they are doing introduction. And after they have messed up one another, 
on maybe it is Friday or Saturday, they will come. They will join choir and be singing. Can you think about it? After you have gone to your village and your people put you in the same room and you messed up your life and you say you are still in courtship and you go to the marriage committee and we have done, we have done it. Ah, you have gone? You have come back? Yes, we went and came back. Why didn't you tell the ah, we thought that since it is not wedding yet, so we just went. How was it? Everything was fine. In fact, our people, they cooperated very well with us. When they told us, do this, I we said, we are Christian, no, we are deeper. We cannot do that. Too. So they just left us alone. Is that the whole story? Is that everything that happened there? You didn't tell us that they put you in one single room in the night. You didn't tell us what you did. So marriage committee will say, okay, we praise the Lord. God is working something out. And then you come before the altar. They join you. When you have been joined in your village, when you went to pay for introduction, and eventually now after the marriage, something is walking over my body. Ah, it will walk over your body. Something eats in my brain. It will be in your stomach as well. That since the marriage now, I don't know how I am feeling. You will not know how you are feeling. Until you repent of that fornication, of that adultery, all the mess, we want to put the whole church in mess. That's why God told Eli. He said, I reject you, Eli. I reject your two sons. All that they are doing with the men in front of the tabernacle of the, of the building. I reject every one of you. He said, all the priesthood, I, re I remove it from your family. You want God to remove the priesthood from our family, from this church? The power of God, the fire of the Holy Ghost, and all the good, good things God is doing here. You want God to remove his son from deeper life? Don't you know that your girlfriend, boyfriend, fornication, adultery, immorality, don't you know it will remove the hand of God from us? And men, their masturbation. They say, eh, this is, masturbation is not a weakness, it is a sin. That you rough and do your own body yourself and say it is uh, when the uh, when my body is uh, pushing me and pressing me too much that's why i do it for myself you are a sinner or a woman will say because uh, i became 24 i became 25 i became 27 and no man came and when my body is troubling me that's why i did something for myself you are a sinner masturbation is a sin Fornication is a sin. All this immorality, you know, people, they were buying newspaper. They knew that the picture of a naked woman is inside that paper. They will buy that paper. They will be reading the first page. That third page, where the naked woman is, they will be looking at it. When a brother is coming, they will open the fifth page and be glancing through and be looking. Who are you deceiving? You are a fornicator now. That's uncleanness. All the bad picture you are looking at. The only difference is that you don't paste that picture near your bed. But you are looking at that picture. You enjoy it. If Jesus comes at that point, you are looking at that picture, where will you be? And these people, they put all the papers inside, inside their houses. They will not, they will not throw it away. And then they say, well, magazine. I only read the magazine for education, for enlightenment. Why do you buy the magazine that has the picture of naked women there and you will say it's for is the naked woman the enlightenment no you can't read any other thing if you read our book that we have written in english there's no enlightenment there if you read the bible there is no enlightenment there i read all these magazines for enlightenment why is it that it is the page that has the women that are not well dressed that's where you are enlightened most you are a sinner. These are the works of the flesh. It mentions uncleanness. Mentions lasciviousness. That is the people that now shamefully, they can do it now. They don't care who is there. And uh, maybe as we're eating the dining hall, and they just say, oh, they say, sister, how are you? They just beat her on the back. Brother, all these messages were, uh -uh. what did I do now? All the messages you are hearing, did they say we should not play at all at all? And then while they are eating, ah, sister, I will eat out of that food, though, and then you put your hand in the sister's food and ah, brother, all this message, uh -huh. did I do any? Is that Christian love? That's Christian love. 
That's what you understand as Christian love. You have been so bad that it becomes lasciviousness, open shame. You don't have shame anymore on the evil things that you are doing. And it talks of idolatry. The people that, do you know there are people that uh, they say they are Christians? And all these idolatrous practices and superstitions of the land, they're still following after them. And the witchcraft, the familiar spirit. And when somebody who is a worker goes to the prayer warriors, area leader, going to the prayer warriors and say, well, I, I don't know uh, why this is happening. It used to happen before I became a Christian, and now I'm, a, I'm even an area leader now. But uh, in the night, uh, some people used to call me, and we used to go and eat under one tree or somewhere. You have witchcraft. You didn't report yourself to the leader so they can remove you from there. You put yourself in the church of God, and you have witchcraft. You have familiar spirit. And then uh, you say, I don't know. If I look at somebody like this, and I say that person will have accident, once I think in my heart, like, the person will have accident. Don't you know you are, you are the devil then? Don't you know that that is witchcraft proper inside you? And you are still saying, well, I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm a worker. You are not a worker. You just follow them calm. If you are going to be a child of God, you will go back to God. That witchcraft and familiar spirit, you will repent of it. And you will bury everything God will forgive you. It talks of hatred. Do you know the people that have hatred in their heart? Before you, they hear the word of God. Oh, they will, be, they will look so nice and so good and everything. After that, they have hatred and animosity in their heart. That zona leader, the way he dealt with my case in the zone, I will never forget. And his wife was a person that reported me to him. And when that wife is coming, ah, sister, how are you? Fine. Uh, what's happening? Nothing. Ah, sister, are we fighting? No. You are fighting. Uh, that no, that no shows you that you are fighting now. Just because of the reported you to the zona leader. That's all. And you say you are a Christian. And from night to day to week to month, all that is in your heart. Okay, sister, I'll post take that. Thing. Send another person. No, I cannot do that. Because I know, I know the people I keep as friends. I, I, I can't, I don't move with everybody. I, I watch myself because uh, I've been disappointed by many people. That's hatred. And that's the work of the flesh. And if you are still of the flesh, you are not a child of God. Variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Envying. When people come to church now, ah, sister, where did you get this, your dress? I like it, oh. I'm jealous of you. Christian, you are jealous? Envy. And you find people making competition. So that if they see that that sister wore a particular cloth yesterday, today they wear their own. If that sister brings a better cloth today, tomorrow they bring their own again. Competition. So that uh, even at this workers' retreat, they will know that I am not uh, just uh, an ordinary fellow. As so and so knows how to dress, so I know how to dress. What do you want to turn our church to? Is that what we taught you? My friend, I am your leader. This is what I wore yesterday. And if it is not dirty, I will still wear it tomorrow. You are just a member of the church. How far have you gone? I'm the leader. I preach to all these people. And if it's looking for money, if I told the church I need money to buy more than what I have, now they will, they will make the money available, but I don't. Well, that's all I need. These uh, sandals I have now, I've been wearing it, I don't know how long now. It's like the sandals of the children of Israel in the wilderness. All those years, it remained there. And since uh, God is keeping it, why do I want to change it? What's the matter with you? You are competing on dressing with one another? That's of the world. Or among the men, if a man has dressed like this, the other man also wants to dress like this, isn't that jealousy and envy and competition? And it is of the flesh. It is not of God. And when we realize this is not of God, then we will we will give ourselves totally to the Lord. 
Over here in Lagos, if I was to go to Bagada to preach today, the way I'm dressing now is the way I will dress. Some of the zonal leaders may wear their tie, they may wear whatever they want to wear. That's their business. It's not the clothes that shows me as their leader. It is the spirit of God within me and my understanding of the Bible and also the life I live that shows them that I'm their leader. It is not that because I see, I see a lot of uh, people here, even workers here, you wear your coat. Did I jealous you because of that? Am I envious of you because of that? If I have chance, I shake your hand, you go your way. I wear what I want to wear. I see some of people in front of me, they have their ties. That's all right for them. There's no sin in that. That doesn't mean that because that brother is wearing a tie, I am pastor, I am general superintendent, let me wear something that will show that I am higher than these people wearing tie. That's no more Christianity. Humility is the mark of Christianity. But this one, envy and jealousy and competition, this one has got that I must get it. This one has got that I must get it. It is not of God. Sometimes I see some of our members, they have their, a big vehicle and all that. I say praise the Lord for them. We have prayed for them. God has prospered them and blessed them. Praise the Lord for them. If the car that I'm using, if uh, smoke is coming out of the silencer, I tell the driver, we cannot change it yet. We are still going to be using this cargo and repair it. I will not say, uh-uh, member of the church is riding this and riding that, and my own car, as their pastor, is bringing out smoke. I am lucky to have a car. Jesus did not try the car. Paul, the apostle, did not try the car. That I even have one that is bringing out smoke, how lucky I am. But you see, many people, they don't understand. They are running after. I must get this. I must get this. All that envy and jealousy. Running after what this other person has got. Running after the, what that other person has got. Let's leave all that. It is of the flesh. And it says murder. Do you know there are people that commit abortion? I'm not talking about people outside. I'm talking about people inside here. You committed sin with zonal leader or with any other type of leader. And you say, if they hear this, this will break the church if they hear. We must do something about it. Let us go and commit the abortion. Because if we don't, it will break the church. Uh-uh, it will not break the church. Don't say you commit abortion for the sake of the church. Don't help the church. If you are pregnant, keep your pregnancy. Don't say to preserve deeper life, to help deeper life, so a deeper life will not break, I must commit abortion. Don't do that for deeper life. Keep your pregnancy. You cannot break the church. Judas did not break the church. People knew that he went astray. Demas that had been following Paul, he did not break the church. No, the church is always there. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. So if you commit your adultery or fornication and now you are pregnant, don't commit abortion because you say, if I don't commit the abortion, it will destroy the church. Not this church. Not this one. Not this one. You cannot destroy this one. So your abortion is not for our sake. It's because you want to hide your own sin. But you see, they commit murder. And they have drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Revelings. A person will say, I'm of deeper life. He builds a house. The money he he borrowed from the bank to build the house. He is going to take him another five to ten years to pay for that, to pay the debt. And he brings all deeper life people together. And he says, I'm dedicating my house. And they begin to play uh, records. They say it's Christian record. And they begin to play songs. And they say, somebody will pray. I never go there. It's reveling. I don't waste my time with them. Or somebody says, he has a child. And he writes a letter to another state, to another district, to another. Everybody come and call, come. I have, a, I have got a child. Ha, ha, ha. When Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, was born, how many people came to dance there? How many hours did all the people in Bethlehem and Nazareth, how many hours did they spend there that you have got a child? We don't know what that child will become tomorrow. You write to this one, write to that one, write to that one, come and drink. And even if they don't drink alcohol, 
at least they drink malt eggs. And you drink, 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 and people don't go. And they say, ah, brother, we we'll rejoice with you. They give, uh, they give you 30 uh, naira. You record it down. Another one gives 10 naira. You record it down. So when we come to church the following Sunday, you have to be looking for the brother and the sister who gave you 30 naira. 20. Ah, brother, thank you very much. Yo. Brother, thank you very much. You have to be looking at your account. Brother, thank you very much. Yo. Which one is that? Is that not what they do, what they do in the world? That's why we ran away from Assemblies of God, Four Square, and Apostolic, and all the churches when they spoiled everything. We ran away with our Bible. And while you were running, then you saw deeper life symbols. You got inside, and you didn't see all that. Ah, you said, thank God I've got to where I'm going. Where you said you are going now, you are spoiling everything for us. It's of the flesh. But if you will come to the Lord today and say, God, we have spoiled this thing. Deeper life, you are spoiled deeper life, you people. Little by li little drops of water make a mighty ocean. A house dedication, child dedication, naming ceremony, this one barrier, this one that, and all the drumming and everything, and even the type of cassette music that you are hearing. This type of cassette that you, when you hear, you will begin to dance. Where did you see it? Did we give you that in deeper life? That your children were here, they will be dancing. Did we give you that here? You see the flesh now? How the flesh has taken over the church? But let's come back to the spirit. Let us tell God, in this, our generation, this church will be spiritual. In this, our generation, this church will be purged. All the things of the flesh that have come in, by the grace of God, we are getting rid of them. And this church will be pure. I will be used as an instrument to make this church pure. Can you be used as an instrument? Can you be used as an instrument? You know, let us deny ourselves. If this little thing will make the church to fall, this little thing here will make the church, why don't you deny yourself and say, Lord, I will contribute to the upliftment of the spiritual life of this church. All the things that have made us to be going like that, like that, we're going to bury everything. And God, God can use us together. So that when we come for another workers' retreat, another time, we clean all the things that are dirty, then we'll be able to preach on other areas of the Bible. But now, what can we talk now? What can we preach now? With the dirt on us, with all the corruption within us, with all the backsliding we're experiencing, with all the fleshly attitude that we're having, what can we preach now? Except this one we're preaching. I want you to talk to the Lord. You see, I love you. This, I have no other church. This is my only church. You are the people that will make me happy. You are the people that will say, Lord, we will keep this deeper life pure. I want you to rise on your feet. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, we will change. Lord, we will change. Lord, we will change. Anything that is not of God, oh Lord, we are going to change. We must change. Don't let us destroy the church with worldliness, with the things of the flesh. In whatever way the works of the flesh have come into your life, tell the Lord you'll get rid of them. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Let's be of the Spirit. Be of the Spirit, not of the flesh. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we have heard your voice. The spirit and the bride saying, come. And Lord, we have heard. Because long ago, we have departed from the old way. The way of holiness and purity. And today, you have called us back. We have heard your voice. And Lord, we are coming back to you. Purge us in Jesus' name. Amen. This carelessness that have come into our lives. 
this worldliness that have come into our life, the idolatry, the practices of the world. Lord, we pray you purge them away from our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we are before you this afternoon. Our prayer is that the departed glory will be restored back again to the church in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we know you have given us your word. You have given us a man, a leader before us, leading us. And Lord, we pray that every one of us will receive the grace to take up and walk in the principles you have laid down for us in this church in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray that the distractions by our sides will never take any one of us out of the way. We pray that the noises we hear by the right and by the left, it will not take us away from your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we are asking you that the word, the doctrine, the principle you have preserved for us in this church you will help us to keep it unto the end in Jesus' name. Amen. Purge everybody here. Amen. Purge the young and purge the old. Amen. Purge the men and purge the women. Amen. And we as a church, Lord, we pray that this day we make a remarkable mark in our lives. Amen. Lead us on, Lord, into that way. To the bosom of the Father. We know you are able. 